Hey folks, how's it going? Happy National Baseball Card Day to you. Um, hope you're, you're finding some time to take yourself or one of your children into a card shop and, and getting one of the, uh, the National Baseball Card Day packs from Tops. Well worth the time to do that. It's also a great time to spend with your kid. But hey, look, we're starting a new segment that we're going to try to do bi-weekly, maybe weekly with Marcel. A lot of folks have, uh, have given a lot of really good feedback in, in, in terms of the value they're getting out of conversations with Marcel. And so Marcel runs the awesome card shop in Las Vegas, a great spot continuing to evolve, We're doing some really fun stuff over there. So if you're in Las Vegas, be sure to go visit Marcel and, uh, we're doing a little segment where we're going to jump in live to his hobby shop um, on the weekends and just kind of see who's walking in the door and talk to him. Also talk about things that he's kind of hearing from the hobby shop world. He gets a lot of different type of traffic in there, not just locals, but a lot of, you know, out of towners popping into the shop. And it, it allows us to kind of get a good pulse on what's being talked about in the hobby, what uh, what's being bought and sold, what are the interests. And I think it'd be really good for folks that, um, just want a different perspective to consider. And obviously Marcel has been in the hobby a long time and, and provides a lot of good feedback. So today we're live from his shop. Uh, we talk a little bit more about the last two days of the national and kind of some things he saw some more player interest, both buying and selling suggestions to new collectors entering the market. So it was just a fun conversation. Um, pretty laid back as usual with Marcel, but would love to know what you think about this thumbs up. If you'd love it, uh, put it in your comments, tell us what you think. Um, he's going to be doing some more stuff with us, uh, on the ground at the industry summit coming up too. um, doing some live conversations with folks. I think we'll enjoy that. So have an awesome weekend. Again, let us know what you think. Subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, uh, on whether you like this or not. And, uh, we hope to catch you later this week. See you. Hey, Hey, what's up, what's up Ty? Up, How you doing? Great. How are you? I am wonderful. Yeah. Looking good, man. Yeah, you're, you're maskless, so you must be in the back room. I, I am in the back room, and for those of you that don't know, in Las Vegas, Nevada, they require a mask when in public. So, um, yep, I'm here in the back room, but it's a Saturday. Oh, it's National Baseball Card Day today. Heck yeah. Yeah. It's what are you guys doing? You doing something fun for it? Just the standard giveaways? Yeah, well, so tops tops offers a um a promotional pack that you give away okay. with purchases of tops okay. our sh we just opened up the shop it's a new shop so we weren't able to participate i was not able to get those packs from my distributor or from tops it was sad and frustrating but uh it's okay because we're going to give away top series one packs with your purchase of baseball products today so dang um, cool love it it'll love be cool. it yeah. All right. Well, let's go see who's in the shop. Yeah, let's go see who's in the shop. Put on the mask. Do you have to wear masks out uh, where you are right now uh, in in your state? In Idaho? No. 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> even not even going to talk about it. Don't talk about it. All right. So we're walking out here right now. And we've got an old, old customer that uh, used to shop with me back on Durango uh, like 12, 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Sounds about right. Yeah. And he's, he's here with his son. Say hi. What's up, guys? Hey. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like something my five or six-year-old would do. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. He's five. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you, uh, so are you, have you been in the hobby the whole time or you just got back into it? Just getting back into it. Um, have bought a few things here and there to open up, especially with him. Um, I've been on like tops bunt and everything on my phone for a long time now, but as far as physical cards, getting back into it, um, you know, buying a few things here and there of kids i grew up with like aaron blair's and chris carter's here and there chris carter yeah so uh, fun stuff to to pick up here and there but starting to get a little bit more into it with him growing up and you know remembering how it was for me as a kid growing up with my dad doing it so no that's sweet hey for those of you that don't know chris carter is a homegrown local 
Uh, I had him sign at the shop, at my old shop. Homeboy is like six, like, I don't know what, like six, eight. He looks like a sequoia. I mean, this guy is so tall. And and he's huge. He's got to weigh like 290 or something. I mean, no wonder when he hits a home run. I mean, some of his home runs still haven't come down. They're still like out there somewhere. But, um, well, that's, great. that's interesting. And so... What what brings you uh, what brings you in today? I mean, is it just that you have you been watching the news and what's going on with the hobby, or is it just you just you, I don't know what brought you in recently again? Um, well, uh, for today by itself, uh, we knew it was National Baseball Card Day, yeah. so I figured it'd be fun to do. Um, I know there's another card shop close by, but I saw that you opened up a new one, so wanted to support you and awesome. everything you've done for the hobby. So, you know, just, just getting back into it and wanted to, to start back up a little bit and open yeah. some more with him. I love it. I love it. Ty, you got any questions for, for, for uh, this lovely gentleman and his son? I do. So compared to when you were in the hobby a few years mm. back versus now, do you feel like it's more complicated, more kind of hard to figure out, or do you feel like, all the options are a good thing. Um, I, I don't think it's more complicated. Okay. I feel it's it's pretty straightforward. I kind of actually miss some of the upper deck products we used to have. Um, so if they could ever get back into baseball, that'd be awesome. Um, Tops has put out a great product, but I do have to say sometimes it's kind of like, wow, what, what is this new one they're coming out with now versus <laughs> – you know, we we've all we, we've all grown up with the Bowmans and the tributes and triple threads, but then all of a sudden there's all these new, clear the authentics and sometimes it just seems a little expensive to get into that kind of stuff because you're paying for one card at that point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that makes sense. What's your holy grail card? What's the card you wish you had in your collection? Oh gosh, I uh, haven't even put thought into that before. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure it's an Adrian Beltre card, but I'll just let him answer that. <laughs> um, I love it. I for for me, um, I don't. I remember having some before. I don't remember if I have it anymore. But Chipper's always been my favorite player of all time. Uh, he's the one that actually got me into switch hitting when I played ball. And uh, yeah, I guess rookie card from him would probably be the the one I'd want to have and hold on to forever. Amazing. Solid. What was that? Is it ni- was that 93? When was his rookie year? Um, well, the rookie card, I think, was what, 91 or 92? 91, okay. I feel like. Yeah, I'm nice. not sure. I'm, you're right, you're, it's right about there, 92, 93. Cool. Welcome back to the hobby. Thanks. Go, go, ha- go haggle with Marcel. <laughs> welcome thank you thanks yeah thanks for participating yeah, brother yeah take care yeah yeah. Right. yeah yeah so so I love yeah, it. It's, yeah it's awesome well, what would fun. you say the percentage of people coming in or coming back into the hobby in terms of just inflow in the store is it a pretty high percentage uh percentage is very high i mm. think that i mean at least since i opened the shop I get a lot of walk-ins, people that, ha- you know, people that, that had no idea I opened the new shop and they're just, they're just coming. They're coming to this location because I had my old shop here. They haven't been in the hobby for years, but they know what's going on. They, they've been watching the news and seeing the highlights and they want to get back into it. So I think the percentage is actually quite high. I think it's going to continue to be that way. That's great. What what do you say when when those folks come in? And this is, a, I mean, you can you probably can't generalize it too much, but what would you say the majority of them gravitate towards? Is it going back and getting nostalgic cards, or like, look, look give me the best new product that you got because I want to get into the hobby again? Oh yeah, I mean, it's 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 a mixture. I mean, you know, just like just like we just heard here, we've got people that come in and they just want a piece of their past and they want to, they, they, they want to collect what they grew up with, or they're trying to introduce their kids. But for the most part, people want a part of the hype. They want a part of the excitement. You know, they, they want to know, 
people want people are coming in and they want to know do they have a million dollar card in their collection i mean <laughs> that's what most people come in hey marcel uh i'm getting back into the hobby and can you look at my cards i i've got you know i've got these cards is there anything here that i should look at selling right now because you know they want they want to know if their cards are worth a gazillion dollars do most of them have million dollar cards in their collection <laughs> oh, how i wish i wish everybody could you're right i mean i wish you could all pull out our cards and they'd all be worth a million right now that'd be so uh, nice. that would probably be would, nice probably that would be, be nice. on this podcast right now that's true that's true you'd be in the back room just counting your dollars uh all right you mentioned hype yep. when i talked to you last you had just finished day two of the show you were starting day three Kind of give a brief synopsis of day three and four. So the second half of the show, did you feel like the train continued and you felt a lot of the momentum continue to move throughout the weekend or did you see it die off a little bit and did the, the narrative change a little bit with the things people were asking? Yeah, it completely did not die off. It just, it, 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 it was strong. It kept strong. The flow of people was strong. You know, what I did see amplified was on the last day on Sunday, there was, um, hold up a sec. Oh, there you go. Wait, I got to show this. I'm going to answer that question, but yep. we've got this, uh, this table here, our break table, which we also use for promotions. It's a blackjack table. <laughs> go figure. Right. Yep. It's oh, Las Vegas. Awesome. So, but we got some, some, some baseball pack cracking going on. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Dude, that's what it's all about. Cracking packs with your kids, man. I yes, swear. it is. Uh, so I tried to get my girls into it, buying like my little pony packs. and That did, didn't work. I didn't How many of those did you grade? Did you grade a lot of those my little pony? <laughs> I tried with garbage pail, my little pony, and a bunch of stuff, but it didn't work. But at least now I got Steven working at the shop and he loves my little pony. So <laughs> um, don't ever say that again. <laughs> Man, oh, so, everybody was, everybody in the media is trying to shut down the truth, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, don't you, don't you know that's that not what we do. Not what all we right. do. Um all right, so Sunday, you said so there was something that shifted a little bit. Well, so what happened is uh there was a selling bonanza. I spoke about that with you the other day about how many people were selling, but on Sunday, it was like a bonanza. There was just so many people there that uh, wanted to unload. I don't know if they spent too much money at the show, right? Or I, I think it was a combination. I had, I, had, I had a bunch of people telling me they're trying to pick up a card. Some people tell me that they're trying to recoup, but gosh so many people selling on that sunday it was it was strong it completely outweighed the people buying so sunday was really like sell 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 day is that not normal for a sunday then is that yeah i mean it... sorry no i was gonna say that it seems like it would be somewhat normal on a sunday but i i have never been a dealer to show so i don't i don't know no, you're right. And, and Sunday would be that day, but it was it was just amplified. It was mm. maybe it's just the sheer amount of people we had yeah. running through the show that weekend. But it just it just seemed amplified. We I, we couldn't sit down for one moment. It was just sell, sell. Hey, are you buying? Are you buying? Are you buying? And I think it, I don't know if I mentioned this, but everyone's got these little briefcases now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they run around with these little briefcases and that, that have cards in them with like this gray foam. Um, that's, that's the new trend. I mean, I, I've seen them before, but at this national, everyone had one. Everyone yeah. had one of those cases. They pop those cases open on your display case and they're like, hey, let's wheel and deal. So I don't know if we got to talk about, did we talk about the... Did we talk about the card shows that were happening inside the hotels? Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so let me ask you this then. So when, when folks like that are, when you see a selling bonanza, um, what is your mindset in that, in that situation? When you start, you start to pick up pretty quickly. Okay. Today's going to be a big time selling day. Do you become more aggressive then with your prices and your, the offers you make people? Did you feel like in general, there was a lot of buying happening? Cause it's one thing to be trying to sell stuff, but was there a lot of buying happening from dealers? You know, I don't know about other tables, but um, most of the people there on Sunday at the end of the show, they were really trying to get top dollar. They were trying to get, they were trying to sell their cards for the most part at eBay minus fees. And us as dealers, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I can't buy at eBay minus fees. I'm probably going to list the card on eBay. I need to buy it below that margin. So even though we had a plethora of people selling, we didn't do a lot of buying. You know, when I, when I would propose to people that I would be paying them, uh, you know, about 20% less than they would be netting on eBay. Um, that was like a no-go situation. Like they literally wanted me to, if the card was a hundred dollar card and they were going to net, you know, $85 after all fees and shipping, they wanted $85 mm. and that just wasn't happening. But, but there was a lot of people nonetheless trying to sell. So. Mm. Okay. What, um, what, what were you trying to buy? And <laughs> I know every dealer probably has their little nuances and things that they're going after, but what were you kind of keeping a keen eye out for? in terms of like opportunities to buy anything in particular? Well, we spoke about this. I, 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 I put a, a red alert on, um, on Justin Herbert, Joe mm -hmm. Burrow, Trevor Lawrence and Pokemon cards. Uh, and the reason, yep. the reason being those cards were the ones that were selling at a very high velocity at our table. Hmm. So it didn't matter how many of those cards I picked up at the show. The minute I put it in my display case, they would sell, they would sell, they would sell. Um, and interesting enough about the, uh, the Pokemon market, the buyers for those cards were not so much interested in, in getting the cards at a, at a great price. They just wanted to make sure that they got the card they were looking for. So, uh, you know, they found the card, they wanted it, they liked it, they knew the price was fair, and they just bought it. You know, I think the, I, I think the mindset of the Pokemon collector is, is at this point, it's probably going to evolve into the same thing. It's probably a little bit different than the sports card collector. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know enough about Pokemon to even ask the right follow-up question to that, but I, I would assume the reason they're looking for specific cards is to complete specific sets. Is that, is that a fair statement or their decks or whatever, right? They need those cards uh, for their deck. Yeah. But our biggest seller was actually the graded one. So it's, it's collectors that just like the way the cards look. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's into, you know, we're very much getting into that market because, you know, that's part of this new, this new era of collecting um we you know our at least our shop here um and i've spoken about it and I, this is not a piece on my shop but oh you guys are out of here all right yeah and it, what, what was the key card the alec bone yeah so so they just got this card right here let's see Woo! yeah i like it pretty cool out of packs he picked yeah congratulations buddy congratulations <laughs> See you later, guys. Always good to see good you. Good to man. see you. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, of course. Take care. All right. Next time we'll chat, all right? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, buddy. Take care. Take care. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to walk you through the shop right now, but it's like this new collector. And, what I, and I'm talking about it all. I'm going to put it all in perspective here. You know, at my hotel until 2 a.m., there was a card show every night in the lobby. It got to the point where the hotel decided to get in their own conference room 
and gave them their own tables for free just to get them out of the lobby. So, um, but those, those kids, and I'm calling them kids because they, they were like 20 to 30 years old. They're part of a different generation and Pokemon is a big part of that generation. And that's one of the reasons we're carrying Pokemon, but it's the whole thing. It's Pokemon. It's, it's, there's all sorts of aspects of, you know, cryptocurrencies. We're, we're here on the verge of having a crypto uh, currency ATM machine. Um, and if you were to look at my, my shop, I mean, I'm selling Pokemon cards, but I'm selling presidential, you know, signed memorabilia and I'm selling, I'm going to, I'm selling graded Yu-Gi-Oh cards and graded magic cards. I have comic books. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to connect with this younger generation that wraps all this stuff into one bundle because I just think that the old hobby shop, I think it's very relevant, but it's, it's got to change. You can't just have sports cards, boxes, uh, and you know, sign baseballs anymore. You got to You got to do more than that. And you got to connect with, with, with the youngsters and the people who are bringing all this energy to the hobby right now. Yeah, no, that's good. That's, those are, those are good, good things to consider. So when you, when you have someone new coming in and they, and they're walking in your store and they're saying, Hey, I want to get into the hobby. I see all this momentum and hype. What do I do? Like, what's the first couple things you tell them to consider doing to kind of jump back into the hobby? Is there anything that you guys, you and Steven and crew kind of recommend to people? Yeah. Well, and I'm going to step back here. I just want to take my mask off just for a moment, but, um, well, look, my answer hasn't changed since, since I've been doing this. I always tell people when they walk back into my shop or their first timers, collect what you like. Because at the end of the day, this is a hobby. Uh, you know, if you maneuver properly and and you're smart about the way you collect, um, I think that that financially speaking, you know, there could be some stability. But people always come into a hobby shop and they're trying to figure out what card can I buy that would be worth more for the most part? And I always tell them to st stray away from that, you know, collect what you like. If you want advice from a hobby expert, that would be a hobby shop owner uh, or someone who works in the hobby, go get that advice. And, and there's a place for that, but always collect what you like, because that's what makes the, 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 the hobby fun. I mean, you and I, uh, both of us are in the hobby in multiple facets and we do it in all sorts of different ways, but the most joy we get, I mean, come on, the most joy we get, I get out of Beltre and you get out of what border, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, make, you can make money and lose money in this hobby pretty darn easy, but if you collect what you like, you'll be pretty darn happy. I'll tell you that. Awesome. Let me, let me give someone else a takeaway then. So if you're rec, cause we're doing a segment on this tomorrow, Tyson yeah. and I, if you're recommending a product to somebody new, what do you yeah. start with? And I'm, I'm sure it depends on sports a little bit, but what, what kind of generally do you stick to the basics, like the series one flagships, or do you, do you find some other stuff that you think people would enjoy? Uh, it's usually the flagships and it's, and it's usually that nowadays because of the price point, somebody walks into my shop. I don't, for the most part, I don't really care how much money they have. I try to put them into a product that is not terribly expensive because I want them to get their feet wet. You know, the last thing I want to do is have someone come in and they're, they're just, you know, they're hungry to spend, uh, the entire wad. And then you put them into one of these hit or miss products. That's got three cards and they're terribly unhappy. So I usually try to put them into, you know, uh, Bowman or top series one or update, uh, or something that's fairly priced. I mean, right now there's that product. Uh, so like diamond Kings baseball, mm -hmm. I know it's not licensed, but the lineup is really nice. And for someone that just walked into the shop to be able to get, you know, 
those hall of famers and stars that they have there legends eternal legends yeah it's fun it's it's exciting it's cool they'll have a good time so you know i'm in it for the long haul and i want people to be happy in the hobby and have fun in the hobby so i'm not going to i'm not i'm I'm not going to put them into something that's going to burn them. You know, I want them to enjoy it. So, yeah, that sounds good. You'd be a great used car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's that's what they say sometimes about us hobby people. So be careful, man. <laughs> <laughs> they do. That's hilarious. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned Herbert. I got a lot of comments about your you kind of earmarking Herbert and getting a lot of people coming up every, you know, 45 seconds asking about Justin Herbert. You just mentioned Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, who doesn't have a lot of cards yet. What other play players surprised you with kind of the interest at the national? And you can even parlay that into what happens in your shop over the last couple of weeks, but yeah, what, what's so been kind of surprising. There, and, and there's really, there's really, I would say Josh Allen, even though he's on the front line. And I mean, there's a lot of people that have eyes on him, but he would be another name. Oh my gosh, this is the guy. Uh, what's the name of, um, what's the name of the uh, Minnesota? Is it is it Justin Jefferson? Oh yeah, the receiver? Yeah, the receiver. Yeah. So, so check this out. I took a stack like this of Jefferson's and I literally figured they would sit there. I mean, at my shop, I can't sell them. I went to the show. It was like piranha. They got, they got murdered, man. My stack got murdered. I reloaded. It got finished. I could not keep those cards in. And there's something going on with that Justin Jefferson market. I don't know what it is, but here at my shop in Vegas, it's non-existent. And at the national, it was real and alive. So that would be the one guy that I just, I had no idea going to the show was so important, um, but he's important to a lot of people. That's good. What about selling? Which guys were you surprised to see constantly being sold to you? Was there people that were being unloaded and you're like, what the heck? Why is there, why is there a trend here? Um, there wasn't, there wasn't a trend on that, but I'll tell you something that you, you, you might find interesting, man. A large majority of sellers were trying to sell. This is, to me, it's simple math. I mean, this is how I see it. You tell me how you see it. Um, a large, oh, wait a second. I got a customer here. Hey, brother, I'll be right with you. Two more minutes, all right? I'll be right with you. Yep. So this is what was so interesting. Everybody wants to, everybody wanted to sell me a card that, there's no sales for everybody walked up to the booth. Hey, you want to buy this card? You want to buy this, this Justin Herbert or this Kevin Porter or this Zion. And I'd say to them, what does it go for? First words out of their mouth. There's no comps. There's no comps. It's a pop one. It's a pop two. Um, you won't find a, a similar sale. So what's happened now is there's so many numbered cards that have been graded. So you got these cards numbered to 50, right? Mm -hmm. Even though in select, there might be, right? Five different colors of die cuts, right? That are all numbered yep. to 50. But the red one, only one person has a card graded that's a PSA 10. So in their mind, it turns into a pop one. And it kind of is. But they kept wanting to sell me cards like that. And um at the shop i would i would bite into that but at the show with it moving so fast i didn't want to buy cards that i couldn't comp out you know i um i like to see my exit and i want to see it clearly i want to know exactly where the market stands on a card when i get into it to do otherwise i mean it's sort of like gambling and that's part of being a card shop owner or being in this hobby, but I'm a businessman and I, you know, I need to know where I'm buying and where I'm selling. And that's how I make my transactions. But that's what I found so interesting. Just so many people trying to sell cards that 
you literally just have to kind of guess what it's worth. And I wasn't biting on that. But they were hoping we were because those cards are sitting on eBay. And that guy who's got that pop one number to 50, uh, you know, Joe Burrow die cut that has been sitting there and he's asking 5,000. The best offer he's gotten is 1,000. He's walking that show floor just waiting for a dealer to offer him 1500 You understand? Oh, yeah. He knows what it's worth. It's sitting on eBay for a month or two. And the best offer he's gotten is 1000 If a dealer will offer him, you know, 20 30% more than he's ever been offered, he feels like he's crushing it. Yeah. That's interesting, right? Because we talk about scarcity and we've we've done some broadcasts on this you know a couple of weeks over the last couple of weeks just in terms of the decline in base value prices, especially graded base cards and how people are gravitating towards numbered more scarce, defined scarcity. But the problem then becomes how do you how do you quantify the value of those, right? It becomes a guessing game. You don't it all comes down to the buyer, right? Who and when and how many buyers do you have? And that's hard to figure out in the hobby right now. It's kind of hard to figure out how many of those buyers exist for some of those cards that there's not a huge market for. There's a there, huge market for Prism Justin Herberts, but not Panini number to 50 die cut, you know, elements Justin Herbert buyers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hit it on the nail, man. I mean, listen, uh, so I, I do some house flipping, okay? That would be like hey let's buy this house right <laughs> we have no idea what it's going to sell for after you rehab it i mean that just does not sound like a great idea for me rehab it could be the same as great it right yeah like 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 no uh, if i'm buying a house you know at x value i'm buying it because i know that i'm going to sell it for y value that's the idea of buying low and selling high you know not like oh well hey i hope this is low and Hey, I hope this, you know, it sells for this high, right? Like that, that's, that's, that's fun for somebody, but not for me. Yeah. Check this out. This is the best buy of the week for me right here. <laughs> is that your, is that your candy of choice? Samantha Stevens, uh, Stevens fiance, 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 and the, the awesome new member of, of the awesome shop bought that for me dude i'm so excited that's awesome yeah so hey next week uh, if you want you know we can get uh we can go down to one of the other card shops in a couple weeks the beckett show is going to be here and uh you know we can interview some some dealers and some of the industry heads live so uh that should Love be fun. september 10th through the 14th cool that sounds fun i think I'm actually to love that What's that? You should actually come down for that. Yeah. Is that over the weekend or is that during the week? I think the card shows over the weekend and the industry summits during the week. During the week. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk offline about that. All right. Marcel, as always, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy Thank the National, you, National Card Day. Top Series 1. Where do folks find you again? The awesome card shop that's in Vegas, yeah. but do you have your online site done? Is it ready? Yep. We're, so it's under construction. We're at 8125 West Sahara Avenue, uh, right outside Summerlin and uh, centrally located about, you know, 15, 20 minutes from the strip. Love to have you. Cool. I'll put your link to your Facebook page in the show notes because I think that's probably the easiest way to connect with you guys right now. Yeah. All okay. right. Hey, hey, right, thanks again. See you. Bye. Bye, Ty.